All right, everybody, so let's start here. This course is important because leaders need to be reminded they are not alone. You are not alone. That transition you're making from being a team member, an individual contributor, to now being responsible for the work of multiple individuals is a difficult and a critical transition. It's difficult because you're now leaving behind your individual work, being responsible for only you, worrying about only you, worrying about only what you're able to get done, to now overseeing the performance and the work products of other people. That's difficult for a lot of reasons. For one reason, uh, it's difficult is because we tend to be selfish as as individuals. We, we want to make sure that we look good 100% of the time. And now that we are overseeing a group of people or overseeing a team, uh, we are now judged by how good our team members perform, how well they do their jobs. And oftentimes, as you know, as an emerging leader or as an established leader, you cannot make anybody do anything. You cannot look over people's shoulder to get them to do what they have committed to do. And oftentimes, people will let you down uh, as you are leading them through a journey to get a particular task done. So it's challenging to now be responsible for leading a team. It's also a critical transition when you uh, leave behind your staff work to now lead a team because that transition will say a lot about the trajectory of your leadership. You do have to think different when you're managing teams. You do have to reevaluate some of your day-to-day -day tasks. You have to reevaluate the way you manage time because now you're managing a team. And at the end of the day, when you take on a leadership role, what you're saying is, I am now responsible for, for influencing a team. When you're looking for the definition of leadership, that's what it is. It's influence. Leadership is influencing a group of people to achieve a common goal. When you accept a leadership role, when you accept a role of overseeing a team, you're saying, I am now responsible for influencing their performance and influencing the outcomes that they produce that will now be coupled together with the outcomes of a group of people that will make up my team. So when you look at all of that, it reminds you that you are not alone. Yes, you are given projects. Yes, you are given assignments. Yes, you are taking over departments. Yes, you are taking over organizations, but you are not taking them over. You're not taking on these new assignments as a lone wolf. You're taking them over with a team behind you or beside you to help you get to where you're trying to go. You are not alone, my friend. Now, you may be saying to me, well, I feel alone because the people on my team may not be pulling their weight. They may not be accomplishing the work that I've assigned for them to do. At the end of the day, I understand that feeling, but you're still not alone because there are people who are there who have been assigned to do something that will advance the work that you are overseeing. You have to now figure out how to get more out of the people that are on your team or to build a brand new team. This course focuses on the building of a brand new team. Now, we do create teams for a specific purpose, and that purpose is to achieve goals and to achieve objectives. As leaders, that's what we're focused on. We have goals, we have objectives, and we're trying to accomplish them regardless of what it takes to get there. Now, when we think about, when we think about uh, what it takes to get to where we're trying to go. We, we think about the amount of sacrifice we have to make. We think about the long hours we got, we got to put in. And I will affirm you that, yes, that is necessary and that is a part of the journey. But consider the fact that what you also have to put into this journey is the selection of a team that will help you get to where you're trying to go. Your team, along with you, will shoulder the burden of advancing the work as far as it can go. When you start to think that it's just you or when you think it's only you, then you will not get very far or and or you will find yourself burnt out and you will really you will create a struggle within your organization. You will create a struggle within your project work and nothing will get done. At the end of the day, your team is supposed to be designed to help you meet the objectives that you have been given or the objectives that you have designed. That's the purpose of a team. That's the purpose of creating teams. It's all about the objective and it's all about the goals that you're working towards. Now, before we get deeper into the content, I do want to remind you that teams allow the leaders 
to do a number of critical things. Number one, teams allow leaders to focus on their competency. As a leader, yes, you're responsible for the um, the outcomes of individuals, you're responsible for their work products, etc. But you, my friend, you have a competency as well. You have a skill. That's what a competency is. You have a skill that you are contributing to the team. And it's not just your leadership, which is a skill in and of itself. Don't get me wrong. But when you think about the functional areas that you are responsible for, you are responsible for producing something as well. Before you got promoted to your first leadership role, what were you responsible for? I know for me, uh, I started out in the IT uh, marketplace, and I was uh, a project manager. Um, and as I took on more roles, I brought that project project management skill with me. Now, I oversaw teams that wrote code. I oversaw teams that uh, developed business plans. I oversaw teams uh, that developed uh, data architecture and system architecture. And I had those skills as well. So I used those competencies that I had prior to becoming a project manager to help my leadership when I helped and led teams along that journey. Along that journey of being a project manager, I picked up other skills, such as negotiating skills, contracting skills, project uh, oversight skills, portfolio development skills, and those skills strengthened my portfolio of skills that I now use on a regular basis in the position that I'm in now. When you think about everything you've developed along the journey, before you became the leader, before you became the supervisor, the manager, you had a competency, you had a skill. What was it or what is it? And as I've grown in my career, I've become more hyper focused on certain skills that matter more to the job that I'm in charge of or the job that I'm trying to accomplish or the job that I'm trying to advance with the team. Not every skill that I've developed over the years matters to my team. Some of my IT skills don't matter anymore it's for my team because we have other folks who have more advanced skills uh, than I do in certain areas. And so they take the lead and run with it. But there are certain skills that I utilize on a regular basis that that's needed by my team. And, and again, this goes back to the point we're trying to make. We need teams to help us focus on our competency so that we can contribute something to the work as well. And the team allows you as a leader to cast vision for the team to aspire to. You're constantly setting the goal, right? Remember we talked about goals. Remember we talked about objectives. That's casting vision. And you are setting that tone for the team on a regular basis. What is it that the team is trying to aspire to? What is it that the team is trying to accomplish? What is it the team is trying to see happen? You are the one constantly casting that vision, setting the tone for the team as they are in pursuit of what you are setting forward in front of them. Without the team, you will find yourself in the minutia doing the grunt work and the team is doing it with you, but they don't know to what end. The team needs to know to what end their work uh, will take them. They need to know why they're doing what they're doing. They need to be reminded. And for those of you who didn't know and you're watching this course, leaders are responsible for this and much, much more. You will be surprised how much work or how much time it takes to just cast vision and to remind the team of the vision. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to strategize to get the team to, to, to come together, to group their work products together to get to a specific end result. It's a whole lot of work to strategize that stuff. And if you didn't know that's what leaders do, that's what they do. And it's important. But you can't do that if you don't have the right team around you that is handling the day-to-day, -day, that is taking on the projects that you cannot do yourself you can't you can't do your job to focus on your competencies and to cast vision.